Okay, my friends, now we are going to go deep into the belly of the beast today. This is Devil's Tower. This guy is climbing up between these two tendon fibrils. You all, Roger. Yes, and this is one too. Now I'm going to show you. You see this stuff that's flaking off here on the surface? It's all over here. That is the synovial sheath. This is also the synovial sheath. This is the same as that. Smaller, but the same. And I can show you that, and I will in the microscope in a minute. It also has that synovial sheath, and then internally it is basalt. You see that? I'm going to show you this in the microscope. I have it set up right here in the microscope, and I have it up here. I have to turn the lights off just for you to see it, and you will in a moment. All right, what you're looking at here is in the telescoping microscope right there. That is that tendon chunk. This is what the fascia fibers look like on this lung, which was DNA tested. This is all a blood squirting out of it over here. It's definitely a lung, there's no question. And this is also a lung, as you can see the alveoli holes here. And this one actually had blood leaking out of it after it was extracted from the mud. They boiled. This one had its, its coating boiled off it all the way down to the, the this tissue layer, which is the alveoli. All right, this one didn't. This one just had its flesh removed around and the organ in total remained. Now, let's look at this pattern. You see the, what this looks like? That's fascia. It's on every single mud fossil. Virtually every one has the same stuff. Now, what does that foot or whatever that is right there, that tendon look like in a microscope? <laughs> exactly the same. Identical. No difference whatsoever. And they all look the same. You see them? That's, that's my lung right here that was DNA tested, human. And that's the one up there. It's this tendon block right there. Now, what about the foot? Is the foot the same? Absolutely it is. Is the goose head the same? Absolutely it is. Is this bone the same on the, its surface? Absolutely it is. Because these are collagens. I'll show you those real quick. Okay, this is going to be Professor Simon. He's going to be asking some questions. But I'm saying they took these tendon straps and they just broke them up and, and made these kind of things. They didn't vitrify that at all. And I'm not sure that's what he's in, 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 saying. But he is talking about vitrification. Now watch Stone, this. Stones, cup and ring marks. But possibly the most intriguing thing that they left behind was vitrified rock. All right, now I'm not contesting that they're forts, no question about that. I'm contesting that this is vitrification. That is biology turned solid, and I have actually made exactly the same thing. All right, look carefully at what you're seeing here. I got the microscope going. Right there is a mud fossil that I made. This is just a little scrap of a piece that I made. 10 years ago. Now I'm going to show you what it looks like in the microscope up above. Now here's the one in the microscope, that little piece, and here is the vitrified he's saying, and here is what mud fossils look like when they turn into mud fossils. That was chicken tissue. It's, it's identical. And there's no difference whatsoever. So vitrification is just something that was assumed and this is just not real. Alright, here's some more of what I made, mud fossils, and that is where the tendon turns into muscle. And these are the tendon straps, and then right at the abrupt transition, the muscle falls away. This muscle is fairly well preserved, and uh, this took about six months to make using, you know, um, salty, muddy, sandy waters. And, uh, and I didn't even cook this at first. This was just raw chicken put in there. Uh, I didn't know about the, the, the heating up process until I really went back and looked through Mel Velikovsky's stuff. And he talked about the seven days before the earth was wrenched by this comet. And it just boiled all the creatures on the earth. The gigantic ones died. And that's what it, it was apparently designed to do. <laughs> is wipe out the giants. That's what all the ancient texts say. And I'm going to start, I'm going with the ancient texts now, way ahead of what we're being told now. Because you see what you see. That is not vitrified rock. This is the problem with the geologists. They refuse to engage. And I've shown things that are undeniable. 
Alright, I'm just going to tell you right now, the size of the creatures that I have found on Earth are just staggeringly large. This would take a microscope to see in us. This is the mucosa, which is the same layer that I'm talking about here, which is interstitium. And that is the top layer, and then there's a coating, uh, this, this layer of all these little balls and straps. That's so you can push and twist and do all that. The balls will not erode. They're tough as hell. This just turns into gooey, wet, red clay mud. Can I show that? I absolutely can. And here it is right here. That is it. These creatures, I, I'm just telling you, that's the mucosa. This is the interstitial layer. And these little balls have eroded away. It, was, it went way out. I don't know how far it went. But it's eroding into the creature's body. And this is literally mud. That's what you find in mud is nothing more than flesh that has eroded. These balls still have biology left in them. That's why things are growing on them. All right. Now this is the mucosa, this is the interstitium, these are the balls. I was going to do a big long thing today, but I don't see any reason to do that. I'm going to go through a whole series of videos about my discovery of mud fossils and show all the deep details. It's time to get this somebody to take a, take a look at it, and maybe Professor Simon will. And, and some, what I want you to do, do this for me. If you took geology courses, everybody did. Everybody went and had geology and, and biology and all that, and if you went to school at all. What you want to do is confront your biology and geology teachers and so forth and say, well, what is this? Is that biology or is that geology? Or is it both? It is both.